10,000 years ago at the end of the Ice Age, a machine came to Earth from outer space to change humanity into mutants. A warrior called Nietzschein united all the ancient tribes and together they sealed the machine deep underground. Afterward Nietzschein's descendants formed an order in Eastern Europe to keep the knowledge of the machine alive in myths and in the sacred book of the Chronicles. However by the year 2707, people have forgotten about the machine and Earth's natural resources have been exhausted. The world is now controlled by four corporations that keep going at war against each other to gain control of the few remaining resources. In Europe, the Bauhaus Corporation is getting ready for another battle against the Capital Corporation, unaware that they're fighting in the area where the machine was buried. Bauhaus Commander Steiner orders his men to keep on bombarding the enemy with artillery while Capital Commander Nathan reminds his team to be brave and not give up. However the mood in the Capital side is incredibly low because they've already lost tons of soldiers and their chances aren't very good. Sergeant Mitch takes the dog tags of every fallen man, determined to honor their memory. At that moment Bauhaus sends out their tanks, so Capital fires back with a large cannon. Another fight begins and the resulting explosions reveal the spot under which the machine is buried and even cracks the hatch, but nobody notices. Bauhaus responds with grenades and poison gas that quickly spreads into the Capital trenches, immediately poisoning all the soldiers who don't manage to put on their masks fast enough. Soon the Bauhaus soldiers break into the Capital trenches, killing every soldier in sight. Mitch is almost killed too, but Nathan saves him at the last second by shooting the attacker. They refuse to give up and quickly start fighting back. Another huge explosion happens and the roof of the cave with the machine finally starts to crack until it collapses. A strange creature crawls out of the resulting hole and runs to the nearest soldier to take him down. Soon more mutants begin crawling out of the hole and attack the capital trenches, obliterating most of the soldiers in seconds. When the Bauhaus advance into that area they're surprised to see the massacred bodies, and the mutants take advantage of their distraction to attack them as well. Meanwhile Nathan and Mitch are sneaking around to survive. They don't see the mutants, so when they find the bodies of their comrades they think Bauhaus did it. Eventually Nathan comes across Steiner and they blame each other for the current situation, so a knife fight ensues. They barely get to move before soldiers from both sides surround them. Mutants continue to come out of the hole and use the sword like hands to kill every soldier in their path. Finally taking notice of the monsters, Nathan and Steiner agree to team up and both armies open fire against the creatures. In the struggle, Jesus gets seriously wounded. Thankfully an evacuation plane soon arrives, so Nathan grabs a machine gun and runs off to distract the mutants while the survivors retreat safely. Mitch manages to carry Jesus to the plane and watches in horror how Nathan runs out of ammo and is surrounded by the monsters. Sometime later, the news of the mutants' release reaches the order of Nietzschean. The leader brother Samuel and a silent nun named Severian go to the monastery's secret room to check the chronicles of mutants, hoping it will tell them how to destroy the machine. The book says that mutants carry injured and undead people to the machine to turn them into monsters, and no army in the world can defeat them because they're too strong. However the book also predicts that there's a chosen one who will be able to destroy the machine. Then Samuel organizes a meeting with the leaders of the four corporations to discuss the situation. The mutants have taken over many of the big cities so they propose to evacuate humanity to Mars, but Samuel points out they don't have enough spaceships for everyone. He's also sure that the mutants are smart enough to follow them. Samuel thinks a better plan is to send a team to the cave and destroy the machine, but the corporation leaders continue to argue and can't agree on a decision. Under the unstoppable mutant attack, life in cities is getting worse every day and evacuation soon begins, however it's impossible to take care of everyone just like Samuel predicted. The monsters kill any soldiers that try to protect the streets and families are split if they don't have enough evacuation tickets for everyone. Sometimes the explosions that are supposed to reach the monsters bring down the evacuation ships as well, killing every civilian inside and the monsters that it crashes on at the same time. In private, one of the leaders tells Samuel that he can't fly to Mars because of his poor health but he's still determined to help. He gives Samuel his ship and evacuation tickets to attract volunteers for the mission by promising their relatives will get to escape. After Samuel leaves with the paperwork, the mutants surround the leader and quickly kill him too. In the meantime, Mitch goes to visit Nathan's family to bring the bad news. Nathan's wife has a breakdown, not knowing how to protect her daughter because they weren't chosen for evacuation. Mitch comforts her the best he can, but he feels useless. In the evening Mitch goes to a bar and dips his teammates' dog tags in whiskey while he gets drunk. At that moment he's approached by Samuel, who asks Mitch to join the mission. At first Mitch refuses, but he changes his mind when Samuel offers him the tickets. The next day, Nathan's wife is preparing some poison as she considers ending things for herself and her daughter to avoid becoming victims of the mutants. However Mitch arrives just in time and gives her the tickets so they can escape. Sometime later, Samuel gathers a small team of fierce warriors who have agreed to join the mission to discuss the plan. They'll have to go through a series of underground tunnels and plant a special bomb in the center, which must be activated with a key that should be in the machine, but they aren't sure. Samuel thinks the chosen one is in the team and will solve the issue when the time comes. Then Steiner takes the group to a cell where the military has locked up a mutant to teach the others how to kill it. 
Severian demonstrates her great skills to kill the mutant while Steiner makes a list, a phosphorus bomb, gunfire, or a sword aiming at the right spot will do the trick. As the mutant dies in the demonstration, Mitch thinks he saw the creature turn human for a second before its end. Afterward the team gathers weapons and supplies and gets ready to go. Before boarding the aircraft, they received a set of sacred swords. The airship shakes quite a lot but manages to take off safely. During the flight, the team shares stories about the loved ones they gave the tickets to. Suddenly they notice a civilian ship coming right at them, so they try to contact them to ask them to change course, but there's no answer. It turns out the civilian aircraft has been hijacked by mutants, so Samuel's group opens fire at them. After a few failed shots they lose track of the enemy ship in the clouds, only for their own vehicle to suddenly get hit with a big explosion. The aircraft catches on fire and the team is forced to run to the escape pod, which is stuck and won't detach. The pilot is severely injured and uses the manual lever with his last breath, allowing the escape pod to finally go loose. The parachute is released to help with the landing, but the capsule is too heavy and the parachute soon breaks. The capsule starts falling at a very dangerous speed and the team argues about when to open the backup, only for the capsule to suddenly crash into a building. After going through, the team opens the spare parachute and the capsule lands in an open field. Everyone is fine except for the captain, who has been stabbed by a huge piece of shrapnel and can't be saved. Mitch gives him a grenade and as the group walks away, they hear the explosion that kills the captain. Moments later the team finds itself crossing a city occupied by mutants, so they move as carefully as possible. However Mitch notices that the evacuation here isn't going well because two soldiers are asking for crazy amounts of money to let people board and hit those who complain. Furious, Mitch makes his way through the crowd to confront the soldiers, and when they refuse to cooperate, he kills one of them. The other soldier is terrified and allows every civilian to get in for free. Then Mitch returns to the team, only for Steiner to scold him for putting the mission in jeopardy. Following a map from the book, the group keeps going and in the evening they reach an abandoned church. According to the Chronicles, there are secret tunnels underneath that could take them to the machine. They enter the church by lowering themselves through the roof with some rope and are creeped by all the religious statues, not to mention the thousands of bones in every corner. Following the Chronicles, they cross the catacombs and eventually find the lost city of the ancients. According to the book, the elevator shaft will take them to the tunnels, meaning now they have to repel 60 stories down. First Kim Wu sets up a foothold at the top to provide cover from the elevator cabin, then the team secures the rope and begins the descent. Moving carefully, they reach the distance mentioned in the book, however they don't see any entrance. Samuel decides to consult the Chronicles and gets so distracted that he slips and falls. Mitch tries to grab him, however the chain breaks and Samuel falls down. Fortunately it's not a long fall and Samuel is fine, but there are tons of mutants waiting for them. Mitch jumps down to protect Samuel with bullets and flames, closing the elevator door to gain some time. Steiner hears the noise and throws a grenade, which Severian catches just in time and throws into the hole below so Samuel won't get hurt. The noise causes more mutants to come out and when the rest of the group joins Samuel, a vicious fight begins. They fight as many mutants as they can, but they're obviously overpowered so the team tries running to the next room. The mutants immediately chase after them and corner them. At the top, Kim Wu furiously fires his machine gun, killing as many mutants as possible until he runs out of ammo. Then the mutants climb into the elevator to attack him, so Kim Wu shoots some fire and cuts the rope, causing the cabin to start falling. Kim begins fighting with his swords, but changes to his gun until he gets the mutant's knife arm and kills it with its own limb. At the bottom, the team is ready to go down by fighting with their swords, but at the moment the cabin crashes on top of the horde. Another explosion occurs yet not all the mutants are dead yet. The team gets ready to keep on fighting until Kim's hand emerges from the rubble and activates a grenade, which kills all the remaining mutants and Kim as well. After taking a moment to pay respects to Kim, the team continues their journey. Samuel checks the chronicles again, which annoys Mitch because he doesn't understand what can be so special about a book. Samuel tells him to have faith and pours some water on the ground, which falls down two little holes that finally reveal the entrance to the tunnel. The group quickly crosses it to reach another room where they carefully walk on an edge against the wall while watching the monsters under them. The mutants are dragging wounded people to the machine, and Mitch is shocked to see Nathan among the victims. Steiner can guess Mitch will want to save him and orders him to stay, but Mitch leaves anyway. Then Steiner considers shooting him to stop him but he can't bring himself to do it and instead keeps on moving with the others. Mitch climbs down and sneaks around to shoot a stalactite, which kills the mutant that is dragging a very weak and bleeding Nathan. Then the friends finally reunite and Mitch carries Nathan to safety. Nathan asks about his family, so Mitch tells him they're on Mars. Now that he knows his wife and daughter are fine, Nathan can die in peace, so he tells Mitch to leave him and finish the mission. Finally accepting his friend is in deep pain, Mitch decides to put him out of his misery. Meanwhile the rest of the team makes it to a narrow bridge, which they must cross as quietly as possible to avoid alerting the mutants underneath. Suddenly a pebble falls and when everyone turns around to check, Steiner slips and falls, barely managing to hold on at the last second. His yelling gives away their presence to the mutants. Steiner's the one carrying the bomb, 
so Severian carefully hangs on the edge to take it from him before Steiner falls to the bottom, where he's attacked by the mutants. As Steiner opens fire and tries his best to defend himself, Samuel thinks they should leave him and carry on with the mission, but the others refuse and jump in to help him. A vicious battle begins as the team fights the monsters with all their might, but there simply are too many mutants and it's impossible to go against such a big army. Every member of the team gets badly wounded, and sadly Samuel is killed. An explosion also burns one of them down. Then the mutants drag all the bodies to the machine. Minutes later Mitch arrives and is devastated to find Jesus' dog tag. Suddenly he's attacked by a mutant, which he quickly kills off, thanks to a warning from Severian. The nun had managed to hide and that warning was the first time she spoke in years. After she shares what happened, Mitch picks up any pieces he can find of the book and asks her to read it so they can know where to go next, but it turns out Severian can't read it, she just has faith in it. Furious, Mitch decides to go to the center of the cave anyway and improvise. The duo advances until they find the mutant lair and immediately sets up an explosive while watching how their teammates are dragged to the machine. The explosive blocks the entrance and kills a few mutants off, so Mitch can run to release Valerie and Steiner. Then Mitch looks inside the pit in the center of the cave, finding a strange mechanism with people attached to it. Apparently it turns people into mutants after a complete rotation. Severian and Valerie tie themselves with a rope and head down to the heart of the machine while Mitch and Steiner hold them from above. Soon the mutants start breaking through the rock pile at the entrance, so Steiner leaves Mitch to handle the rope alone and goes to confront the monsters. With one last salute, he activates a grenade and goes down as he kills all the mutants in the process. The weight of the rope is too much for Mitch to handle alone and he's dragged to the edge of the pit until he falls. The women fall too and land safely, however Mitch ends up in the mechanism, which activates to hold him down. Mitch gets exposed to radiation and a mechanical arm inserts various chips in his body. The last chip is supposed to go into his head, so Mitch keeps bending his neck to dodge it. The machine misses and breaks the bindings instead, so Mitch is free to grab his gun and destroy the mechanical arm. Then Mitch joins the women and uses a knife to remove the chips. His face is still a bit mutated, but he never goes full monster. The group finally reaches the heart of the machine and while Mitch prepares the bomb, Severian and Valeria fight off the monsters that come from both sides. Mitch doesn't understand the device well and can't guess which hole the detonator goes in, so he has to figure out the few book pages he has. Severian takes care of a few more monsters but freezes when she sees a mutated Samuel approach her. However she reacts when Samuel attacks her and forces herself to fight him. On the other end, Valerie kills one more mutant yet falls in the process, so her body gets cut in two by the spinning device. Mitch takes over her spot and fights the other monsters while urging Severian to kill Samuel, but she can't bring herself to do that to her precious mentor and Samuel stabs her before pushing her off. Afterward Samuel and Mitch begin fighting hand to hand. They exchange a few hits before Mitch manages to push Samuel to the ground and starts punching him with his team's dog tags. Samuel pushes him off and Mitch falls next to a page from the book and a sword. Seeing them together makes him realize the sacred sword is the key, so he immediately uses it to stab Samuel and inserts it in the machine at the same time. The hatch on the ceiling opens and the structure starts shaking, so Samuel tells Mitch to do a jump of faith. After some hesitation, Mitch jumps down and falls into an underground river. When he resurfaces, he watches the machine take off, flying off into space to finally leave Earth for good.